So today I'm going to attempt to answer the question, why do we on the internet love Murderbot so much? If you're not familiar, Murderbot is a science fiction series that is predominantly made up of novellas that follows an artificial construct that calls themselves Murderbot. They have hacked their own programming and overridden it and their only true desire, at least at the beginning of the story starting with All Systems Red, is to just be left alone so that they can watch their soap operas and other TV shows. And so that is the basic premise of where the series starts and it has become an internet sensation. These books are beloved, they are award-winning, and either you are someone who have already read them and really love them and want to gush about it here in the video with me or you're someone who hasn't read them yet and are trying to figure out why all the hype, what's this all about, is it worth my time, should I pick it up? So hopefully I'll have some answers for you here. This is all going to be very spoiler free, more just talking generically about why the series is loved, why you might like it and give you a little bit more information without giving away too much. All that being said, let's get started. So I think the first hook that always gets people excited about this series is the idea, the premise of a character that simply just wants to watch TV and kind of zone out and get away from their responsibilities at work. And let's be honest, especially to perhaps my generation and the generation after, I think it's very relatable. Sometimes we just want a chance to check out, take a breath, take a breather, take a health moment, and just kind kind of back away from responsibilities and just enjoy some good old television. And so I think it's just very relatable. I like a story where you have that coziness to it, where the character perhaps is not something we'd like to admit, but a lot of us would have days where we would just like to watch cartoons all day and we don't really want to apologize for that. So I think there's something immediately likable about a character that starts out with that premise. And it also works into the larger narrative structure of these stories. So as I mentioned, most of these stories are novella and I like that they read very episodic. At first when I started reading this series, I remember being disappointed that the stakes weren't higher. Basically something happens and Murderbot has to deal with it, has to deal with the humans in their life. And then by the end of the episode or the end of the novella, everything is wrapped up again. And at first, again, I wanted more because I do lean into more epic stories. I tend to really like science fiction with horrible stakes where people die and all the terrible things happen. That is not what this series does, but I would argue that that's not what it's intending to be. So just in the same way that Murderbot simply wants to watch or consume with their comforting shows, the author creates a comforting science fiction series. So I would argue that this is a series that will appeal to those of you that share my love for something like Star Trek, where you have an optimistic future where there is a host of different ideas and people and everyone works together. There is always a conflict of the day, but for the most part, especially in something like Next Generation, the conflict it typically resolved within the episode and everything goes back to the status quo. And for the most part, I know there's a few exceptions, but especially in those shows, typically all the main characters are fine and safe. You don't really worry for their health and safety. Instead, you know they're probably going to be fine, but we watch it not necessarily because we're terrified that someone is going to die, but because we find it comforting. We like the characters, we like their stories, and want to be there. So for me, that's the strength of Murderbot as a series, is that it has a very familiar narrative. Each story kind of follows the same beats, and you have a narrative voice that is very humorous and dry and very distinct. It's very well done, and it's just the kind of character you want to spend more time with, which is why this works so well as a long-running series. I know a lot of people, and I do agree, that often say that the full-length novel network effect is one of the weaker entries, and I honestly think it's just as good as the other ones. I simply just think that it's more noticeable that it's episodic in a longer form, because it kind of has, once again, a plot where you know nothing is really going to go wrong, and so a lot of the book feels a little bit unnecessary because you could just kind of squish it together into novella form and end up with the same idea. But that being said, again, I'm reading it because I want to spend time with the characters. I like those ideas. And as I mentioned, part of the reason I think this works so well for Star Trek fans is that it suggests an optimistic future. So certainly there is conflict, there are terrible things still happening, but our main character has good intentions, there's an optimistic view, and also brings together a lot of ideas that are great and very progressive in terms of gender identity. The main character themselves, as an artificial intelligence, doesn't really have gender. They are simply a person or wanting to be a person, which we'll discuss more. And so that is kind of woven into the plot in a very natural way where it's not overly discussed, but just simply accepted that that is that they are just an entity and we are not trying to assign them to certain gender conforms and all of that. So I like that 
that this book kind of pushes the envelope but in a very subtle way of not trying to be too preachy but just kind of reaching out to the audience and hopefully a way that feels very authentic to those that are reading it. To get into that a little bit more, I think that a murder bot really works in the fact that it talks a lot about personhood. And going back to my Star Trek analogy, you have characters like Data in Next Generation and then the Doctor in Voyager where you have these artificial entities that desire to be human or as close to human as possible. And so you bring in a similar idea here where you have an artificial construct who is living among humans and you expect it to be the very typical narrative where you're watching them desiring to be human and wanting the full human experience. And I like that while Murderbot identifies that they want to be a person, they want to be an individual, they actually are very critical of humans. And so along that vein, I think one of the things that this series explores is identity. And so as I mentioned, a Murderbot is someone who craves or desires to become or be seen as an individual, a person. But within the story, they clarify that they want to be a person, they don't necessarily want to be human. And that is a very refreshing change from something, again, going back to my Star Trek analogy, if you think of Data from The Next Generation or the Doctor from Star Trek Voyager, those are artificial entities that want to be human, that desire that experience so badly. It is their end goal. And it's actually kind of refreshing the fact that Murderbot doesn't necessarily want to be human. They aren't considered to be the superior being, the thing that everyone desires to be. They recognize that they want the autonomy. They want to be, again, recognized as a person, to be allowed to have time off. They want to be more than seen as just an object. However, they see humans as very flawed, which let's be honest, we are regardless of your views we make mistakes and you get to have this artificial construct who is seeing that and criticizing that from the outside and are very skeptical of humans for all that we are. So I actually love that where you have that back and forth where it plays into the familiar trope of this artificial intelligence wanting to be human, but then it kind of pushes back against it and has a more nuanced take. And that's why I think the series works again, is that it's multifaceted, it's complex. Constantly you have the character reevaluating the relationship with other people, their their feelings about themselves and that grows and evolves with the series. So while he mentioned the show or this novella series being very episodic, really what it does is it has similar tropes. The action and adventure in my mind kind of fall in the back burner. I don't feel like you read the story for the exciting scenes. Instead, I read it for the character and I want to see them grow over the course of all of these books in a way that is slow and subtle, but very satisfying to a reader that sticks around. And last, I want to talk about friendship within the series, because to me, that is an aspect that is not discussed enough within the series. And it's a fact in the very first book, we find out that the character has hacked their own programming. And that programming that is in place is to protect humans. So with the programming term, turned on, they cannot harm another human being. So of course it's quite alarming in the first book when the crew surrounding Murderbot discover that their programming is turned off. But by doing so, it actually realizes that Murderbot could destroy them all. They could become Murderbot as they describe themselves to be, but that is not their desire. The idea that even with the ability to make their own choices to have independence and to be a free-willed being, they do not want to destroy humanity. And it kind of, again, pushes against a lot of the apocalyptic, dystopian type stories where we have the uprise of the artificial intelligence that are just going to bring us all to our knees. Instead, the idea is they just want the same rights as everyone else. And again, it's very refreshing. Obviously, it's a story that, again, while it's talking about artificial intelligence, can easily be applied to other social groups. And that's why I like this story, is that if you're not looking for those extra layers, you can look past this and just see it simply as a story of this artificial construct. But if you're looking for that extra social commentary, if you're looking for a little bit more depth in your story, it is there. It's subtly written, so it's not pushy. It's not over the top. But I love this story because it works on so many levels. And so because of all of this, you really get to see an organic friendship grow between Murderbot and the humans around them that is built off respect and mutual understanding, not based off programming that is forcing Murderbot to like people that they don't. And instead, you actually have to see the humans earn their trust, earn their respect, and that again slowly grows over time as Murderbot grows as an individual and also the humans grow around them to better accept them for who they are. So if you can't tell, I think that this series is really brilliant, really smart, and I love so much of what it's doing. At the time recording this, I've read everything that's published, but it's not the final book, so there is more to come. Given the fact, again, that the series is so episodic, I'm going to guess that the ending is not going to be a devastating blow. Simply, the series will just 
just eventually find its resting place. And I do think it will really become a classic of our modern era. I think it's going to be very representative of the stories that we're looking to tell today. And I can't wait to introduce it to more readers. If you're new to Murderbot, I do think it's very accessible. Yes, there is science in it and technology babble in the background, but it's really a story about characters, about relationships, about being a person, which is also relatable regardless of how much science fiction you have read. And again, if you are a diehard science fiction fan, I suspect you've already read this because it's oh so popular online. But if you haven't, this is a really good chance to pick it up because I think, again, it's smart. It's different. It leans into the tropes, but it goes in a little bit different direction while still being a love letter to the science fiction that has come before, paying its respect to things, again, like Star Trek that have really paved the way for a more optimistic, cozy future that we all hope to live in one day. So hopefully I've convinced you to check out Murderbot. If you've already read it, please let me know down below how you feel about it. Do you agree, disagree with my thoughts? And I'd love to know what other science fiction series would you love me to cover in more long form videos like this? Please drop your comments. If you're new to my channel, do stick around and subscribe. I do read science fiction as well as fantasy, horror, and thrillers. If you want to help me out with this video here, you can give me a thumbs up. You can share it around online and you can drop a comment, even if it's just a little emoji like a spaceship or a robot, that'd be great. And if you want to hit the little notification bell, you'll never miss these extra videos for me. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.